I'm going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is River, and um, welcome to Presentation Innovations. Um, so I'm the graduate assistant for the ADP Center. Um, and I just wanted to say, since there's only a couple of us, typically I would have um, people write any questions they have in the box, in the chat box. But since there's only four of us total, feel free to just unmute yourselves and chime in at any point if you have any questions that come up. So we'll get started. Today's topic is gonna to be about um, innovative, pre innovative presentations. Um, so first we'll cover why use innovative presentations rather than regular, um, typical, normal presentations. I'm gonna go over two resources that I use frequently for my presentations. And then after that, we're gonna go on to a couple of enhancements that, um, that can really kind of step your presentation game up. Um, there's four programs versus Google Slides, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, then there's Kahoot, Slido, and Prezi. So let's get started. So you may be wondering why innovative presentations. Well, innovative presentations are a great way to kind of make your presentations more creative um, by making them more interactive, more personal, and much more conversational rather than just one person um, speaking and just rambling, it kind of will break up your presentation and allow for more um, interpersonal or just more communication and to break up the presentation really. It will also keep your audience engaged rather than having um, your audience doze off and get bored. You can receive feedback from your attendees and kind of, like I said, make it more interactive so that way that they don't lose focus and they can stay engaged. Also, what's great about the programs that I'm mentioning is that there's absolutely no downloads necessary from either end, either the presenter or the audience. Um, so it's super easy and yeah, there's no extra steps involved. Um, also, interactive and innovative presentations can be accommodating to different types of learners rather than just audio learner. Um, yeah, audio learners, you can ap appeal to visual learners and just other people who kind of um, benefit from a much more deeper level of learning, if that makes sense. And then lastly, why not? It's great to be creative. Um, you can reach different kinds of people and reach your audience in a different way rather than just kind of going off of points and talking about X, Y, and Z. You can actually um, utilize different components which can make it more creative and reach them in a different way than a typical presentation. Okay, and also just a quick disclaimer, while the aesthetics of a presentation do make a difference, there's nothing wrong with having original slides. They just might not appeal to different kinds of learners as much. So these are just quick ways to kind of um, boost your presentation game and make it a little bit more unique. Um, so we're gonna cover a couple of different resources. Um, so the first one is gonna be Slides Carnival and the second is Unsplash. So Slides Carnival is a free slideshow template um, resource. This is actually, this presentation was created through Slides Carnival. Um, so essentially it's a website that you go to and you'll click on a template that you really like and it'll be a link and you can actually download it onto Google Slides, which is what I used and what this presentation is created with, or you can um, upload it to PowerPoint. So it's compatible with both. Um, so just a quick, just to show you guys very quickly, this is what um, it looks like. And the way that it actually will upload onto Google Slides is like this. Don't worry, this presentation is not actually 50 something slides long. It's, these are just like, basically you can work off of these. You can either um, utilize it and change it, or you can kind of copy the slide and make a new one. So it gives you a great template and it's super easy to work with. Everything is uniform and there's a bunch of different um, options. You can always um, click on the template and pick that one accordingly to like the theme of the presentation you want it to match up with. So this is presentation. So I kind of used um, keyboard, like technology, school, education, like that was kind of my theme that I wanted to go for. Um, so that's, this is the one that I had selected. So it'll upload right onto the Google Slides very easily. The second one is another resource called Unsplash. It's also um, a website and 
This is where you can basically download free high resolution images and it'll have really nice um, pictures that you can choose from and it'll you can enhance your presentation that way. So it has so many different things. There's hundreds of thousands of photographs and they're all really, really good quality pictures. Um, so yeah, you can just pick and choose and download from there and incorporate that into your presentation as well. And then there's also like different categories that you can select from. So that is also a great resource as well. Okay, so we'll get started with the first um, program that I really wanted to talk about, which is Google Slides. And again, this is what this presentation was created with Google Slides. Um, and what Google Slides is, is basically a cloud based presentation application. Um, it is you basically, when you create your presentations, they'll be stored in this place called Google Drive, which also has, if, if you have any um, Google Docs, if you have any, um, like any other kind of Google-based um, documents or, pro, or any kind of presentation, it will be stored in the drive. Um, I will say that the Montclair Google Drive, it's, there's unlimited storage. However, with your personal account, there is limited storage. So that can fill up. Um, and also it's worth noting that if you create a Google slide within a Montclair account, um, there are some kind of complications with sending it out to an external account. So an email that's not affiliated with Montclair. So, and also the Montclair account does expire upon disaffiliation or upon graduation. So if you want something that's you want to keep for long term for your own personal use, um, I suggest creating a presentation or a doc or anything within the Google um, programs within your personal email. So that way you will always have it. Um, so that's just a quick disclaimer. Google Slides are iOS, so like all Apple products and also Android app um, available. So they're accessible through those two um, platforms as well as online. Um, and essentially you can just build and edit presentations by yourself or collaborate with other people, which is really great. You can share your presentations. And also it's very similar to um, Microsoft PowerPoint. So it's, I think it's a little bit more basic than PowerPoint. However, um, they're, the two are very similar. And like I mentioned, um, it is easily shareable. You can share through a link or um, you can share, upload that link to Google Sites. And when you share, you can either have people edit it or you can have them just view it. Um, so you can either collaborate it or just kind of send it out to the people that you want to see the presentation and um, they can just view it as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so just a quick, overview how to use it. I'm sure you guys are familiar, but just in case you're not, um, basically you'll log into your Google account. And then on every Google like homepage, there will be this little, these nine little dots right here. And actually they're called a waffle. Um, I just learned that the other day and you'll select, so you'll click on the waffle and then you'll select slides from there. After that, you're going to, it'll bring you to this page and at the top of the page, it will have this. And you can either create a new blank blank presentation or you can choose from the template gallery. So, you know, it has, you know, a wedding presentation, professional portfolio, um, a photo album. Um, so you can kind of select from there. There's many options to choose from. So this is just like the um, presentation templates from Slides Carnival, but Google Slides are a little bit more basic, um, but they also have a variety of options as well. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's very similar to PowerPoint, like I mentioned. This is what it looks like from my end um, when I was creating it. So it's kind of like a presentation inception right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's very, very simple to manage. Okay, and lastly, you can either, once you created your presentation, you can either export it, um, through presenting it live, which is what I just did when I clicked present, or you can share it with an invitation to edit or to view. So if you do um, edit, you can collaborate with other people. They can also edit it at the same time, or they can just view it and um, 
it'll be through a shareable link. So when you click share, this is the screen that will pop up and um, you can enter email addresses. And then over here, when you click on here, it'll give you the option of how much control you want them to have. So um, I just have three quick tips with Google Slides um, that can enhance your presentation. So there is a copy paste function, which makes it super easy. And it's also um, very good to use with Slides Carnival, especially because Slides Carnival has a bunch, like what I was mentioning before with the, since the template, um, you can either create a new one and it'll kind of copy the structure of this one, or you can just copy paste the little emojis or the little like pictures that they have. If you copy them, you just hit Command C or like Control C, or you can click on it and click copy. And then after you can paste and it'll paste the image exactly like that. Um, and I use that function with literally everything that I create. I use, probably press it at least a hundred times when creating a presentation. And then also another thing that you can do is when you, um, instead of just hitting this plus sign for the new slide right here, you can actually click on the slide that you wanna copy, copy that, and then also paste, and it'll create the same exact slide. So including the same information, um, and then you can just edit from there. So that's a really um, good function that I think is um, very handy. And then the second one is to export your um, presentation. So what you can do is actually head over to file. So say I wanna share this presentation, but not through Google Slides. You can actually convert it to a PowerPoint, a Word doc, a JPEG, so on and so forth. So if you click file and then you go to download, it gives you a bunch of options of um, ways that you can export it, which is pretty handy, I think, in case you wanna share it through email, but, it, but not within the Google community. So when I click share actually here, you can only share it within the Google community. Um, if, you, if you're sharing it to like a Hotmail or a Yahoo account, they're not gonna be able to access um, the presentation. So it has to be to another Gmail. And lastly, um, so say you, know, you kind of messed up and you wanna start the, the presentation from scratch, or you really liked the version of it that it was the last time you worked on it, but you know you already made all these changes. So what you can actually do is next to the help button over here, you can view the version history um, by clicking over here, this link, it says open version history. And it'll tell you when the last edit was. Um, and then basically you can click on, so I created this on the 23rd, and I made edits on the 25th at different times. So you can click on whatever version you want and it'll revert to that, which is really great. And you can actually change the names of them too. Um, so it's, it's just a really great option to have. And you know, in case you mess up, you wanna go back, that's always there for you. And it automatically saves, which is also great too. So you don't have to keep hitting uh, control S or you know, manually saving it or anything like that. So, Next is Kahoot. Um, this is a little bit more educational, I would say. Um, it's a game-based learning platform. And essentially what it does is that it's very engaging um, for students and viewers. Um, and basically what they wanna do is quote unquote gamify the learning, uh, the learning experience. So they kind of, you can make a presentation and gamify it or make it like, um, have your participants and your audience interact with it and play a game to learn the information. Um, you can give the audience a voice and reinforce your content with quizzes. Um, and also you can use it for e-training, um, which is really great. So you can, you can use it for uh, many different things and I'm gonna go over it in a little bit more detail in just a second. But um, the only thing is, is that this isn't compatible with Google Slides or PowerPoint. However, it's kind of like a more, I would say live platform um, and you can integrate it with Google Hangouts, Slack, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So this is what it is all about. We're gonna actually do it together. Um, it, they kind of give this really nice demo where you can learn about it. Um, and I'm just gonna lower the volume because it can be a little loud. But 
Um, basically, this demo will show you what it would look like um, through the desktop version, as well as people joining in from their phones. So I would be, if I was presenting it, I would have the desktop version and manage it through here. And then the participants who would join would be joining through their phones um, or their tablets. So let's do, we're gonna do a classic. And then, so then what it'll do is it's gonna give a game pin. And this is the game pin. I'm actually gonna mute the music. Um, so the use, this would be presented and the users will type in 5112566 and enter the game. Okay. So then once everyone joins, their name will pop up right here and you press start. So we'll just go through this together just to show a couple of the features. So what is Kahoot? They're the leader in gamifying the learning experience. Um, and it is kind of makes their uh, presentations and e-learning and training more engaging. So these are all the different ways that you can use it. You can use it for interactive presentations, training, e-learning, onboarding new hires, engaging audiences at live and virtual events, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, and then for compliance and sales training. So. This is what it'll have you do. So how do you think you'll use Kahoot? Um, so essentially this will be presented on the screen and then the audience will select an option from here. So I think that I would use it for presentations and meetings. So I'm gonna click this right here and then the results will be just displayed right um, then and there at, as more people join, there would obviously be more numbers and yes, so it would be like live results. Okay, so net another quiz. You cannot play Kahoot via, I'm gonna say Bluetooth because you can use it through, you can use it through a phone. They also have an app and then you can also use it through a laptop, which is what I'm doing right now. And then it kind of, again, it's a game. So um, other users would also be playing and it would be much more, collaborative and flowing. So you basically can create a presentation. You can import your slides from Google Slides as a PDF, from Keynote and from PowerPoint. You can add interactions, which is what like we just did right now. Um, and you can add quiz questions, poll questions, um, and make it interactive that way. What, what does it mean to in, uh, import it from PowerPoint and Google Slides, meaning you would just, uh, the question or whatever would, instead of saying, what is Kahoot? It would be the slide from your PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So um, if I was to, with my Google slides right here, remember how I mentioned mm -hmm. um, that you can create it into a PDF. So basically it gives you the option to upload that as a PDF onto um, Kahoot. And then you would, it would take all the information there and bring it to Kahoot. And then it would, um, you would edit it via Kahoot. So it's like you can create your presentation on Google Slides or PowerPoint and then add interactive polls, interactive quizzes mm -hmm. and manage it through here as well. So if I were to do my presentation on Kahoot, but first do it on slides, I would have to design my slides to be more like a Kahoot question um, with so the multiple choice and true and false. and. Yeah, so what okay. you can do is create the content on your slides. And then um, you can, I'm pretty sure it gives you the option to like add um, a blank slide and then create a poll. Oh, got it. Yeah, so you'll be able to like, um, it'll give you the option to create a quiz or create a poll um, and it'll take you through it. So I, I'm not going into the too much of the details, yeah. but I would be more than happy to sit with you if you have further questions um, another time, mm -hmm. but um, it, it will guide you through it. So you can it. always add a slide and then add the, quiz or the poll question through Kahoot itself. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, also, what's great too is that you can upload pictures from your computer 
Um, you can add videos through YouTube, which is really cool. And then also like there's this little function where it's an image reveal. So like um, it'll, it will hide the image and then um, it'll, you can like create anticipation and engagement and then, you know, reveal it at the end. Um, so it just has like a bunch of little features like that. And um, it's the reason why um, Kahoot is so great, I think, is that you can keep engagement high. So like, um, rather than ch just having your audience sit and listen to you the whole time, people can actually contribute. So, you know, when they're losing their focus, you can draw them back in. Um, and then it also mentions to not have more than 50% slides in your presentation. So kind of do at least half and half with your content as well as um, the quizzes and to make it interactive and like have a balance. It suggests to um, tell a story. So you can divide the presentation into different chapters, um, mix of slides, and then also interactive questions. And they mentioned try to keep it short um, with a total of 20 slides and questions and then get real time feedback. So like from your audience, you can include polls um, and word clouds and you can really just make it creative and take any route that you would like, which is pretty cool. Um, and then also you can add explanations when, so then you can also do this self paced challenge, which is great. So everyone will work at their own pace. And then at the end, um, you can add an explanation once everyone is finished doing the quiz or um, doing their challenge. Um, so there's a bunch of different features on Kahoot as well. So just a quick quiz, which of these question types can you not include in a Kahoot? Polls, essay questions, word clouds, and open-ended questions. Um, if you guys wanna just shout out, do you have any guess? Any guesses? Open-ended questions. Open-ended <clears throat> questions, okay, we'll go with that. Let's see. So that one was incorrect. Oh. <laughs> Good try. Um, but it was close because essay questions are kind of similar. Um, I guess you can, when they say open-ended questions, it's kind of like you write, what is your favorite color? And then you would just type in that color um, or, you know, what are your thoughts on X, Y, and Z? And then you would just type it in. So it's a quick little like sentence rather than an essay question. It might be like a longer essay question that, you know, would take some time. Um, but you can also do polls, you can do word clouds. I'm not really sure exactly what those are, um, but basically they have a bunch of different kinds of um, question types except essay questions. A question, well, is there any yes. way of integrating this into a, a, a website, a Facebook page or a website? No. Okay. So um, I think it's more for live, um, platforms so like zoom or through um but you could actually take a link like if you were to create it take a link and paste it onto facebook and people could join through facebook like it will the link will lead them to your kahoot if that makes sense so you can't they can't interact via facebook but they will have access to it from facebook okay but they won't need any special software to use it that way nope just so um just a computer or, yes, you can do a web browser, you can do their app, they have an app, or you can just log on from your phone or your tablet. Um, and it'll, they don't have to download anything at all. We're gonna use Kahoot for trivia games or trivia challenges. And so right before you want them to start, you could you just post it on your web page or your Facebook, the mm -hmm. Kahoot.it and the game pin, the, just like what she gave us. But you don't want to, but you usually want a time frame. You don't want to leave it up forever. Yeah. So you can adjust like how long you want it to um, go on for. And you would create like, oh, well, I want my presentation to last, you know, Monday from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, and then it kind of will close it out after a certain point. Um, but yeah, you can you can post the link anywhere and people can just join the other phone or anything, um, but it would always be through Kahoot itself. Um, so quickly before this ends, it says, how do you create an interactive presentation? Put the process in order. So I'm just gonna do it quickly here. So I believe first you click the create button. Oops. Uh, 
oh no, I'm not gonna have time. Well, it'll show us anyways. So first you click the create button, then you import your existing slides. So you would actually, if you're not just doing a simple poll or a quiz, you would have to import slides. Um, or if you just want it to be a quiz or a poll and have like an interactive thing through there, you can just do it that as well. Um, but you can't really add any information through Kahoot. You would have to create a presentation and then bring it onto this platform. Um, third step would be to add interactive questions. And then lastly, click done. So it's a very user-friendly, um, simple kind of platform. And yeah. So I guess I got first place because <laughs> I'm the only participant. Um, but does anyone have any questions on Kahoot before we move on? Okay, awesome. Okay, so that was that. Um, I'll just briefly, like, I'm just gonna show you guys what the pricing is. That was the free version. Um, if you plan on using it frequently, you can always upgrade, but the basic version will give you um, all of these, but then I think you're only allowed to have 10 participants. I'm not sure if that number is correct. Sorry, eight eight group members, um, but then also like you can have teacher groups and then, you know, if you upgrade, you obviously get much more, um, much more little like enhancements, but, um, and also you can do like a, I pro I'm pretty sure you can do a trial, um, but either ways, like if you wanted to upgrade, you can always do that. But if you want the basic, it would just have to be like smaller groups. Um, so these are the prices. Um, oh, and I also forgot to mention that in the chat, um, if you guys just want to take a look, there is a JPEG that I put on there with all the programs and just kind of a synopsis of what we're discussing today. Um, so if you want to download that, you can do that. And that will, um, that way you have kind of like a worksheet to take away um, from this presentation. So you don't have to write everything down. They're all listed right there, every program that we're going over. Um, so did you say that was in the chat? Yes. So I couldn't see it. Can't see it here either. Yeah. Oh, you can't? Okay. Let's, nope. Let me try to do that again. Did it come through now? Yes. Yes. yes okay. There. Perfect. Um, if you guys here, let me just, that's a PNG. I just want to share a JPEG with you guys because I think the PNG kind of gives issues sometimes. So just give me one sec. Okay, I just sent another one. Did that one come through? Yes, it did. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to Slido. Um, this is our second to last, um, what's that word, <laughs> program. Um, this is my favorite of the whole presentation. It's really fun. So um, if you guys wanna just, if you have a phone near you that has access to the internet, um, if you don't mind just grabbing that very quickly and letting me know when you have your phone with you. Does everyone have their phone? Okay, um, I didn't hear anyone. Do you guys have your phones or do you just need a minute to grab it? I have my phone. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I'll give you guys a minute to um, grab your phone, the rest of you. But for now, I'm just going to play the video. Um, just, it does a really great job at explaining exactly what Slido is. 
if it loads. <laughs> Oh no. Why didn't it load? Okay. Are you a speaker, a trainer, or a manager who runs meetings? You guys can hear that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then you have to use Slido. Slido is the ultimate Q&A and live polling platform that creates a conversation between you and your audience. If you want to make your presentation truly exceptional, you have to engage your attendees, and Slido does that for you. Polls are a great way to get your crowd involved, whether you want to find out how they feel, collect feedback, or simply break the ice. With Slido quizzes, you make learning fun, and you can find out how much your audience has learned. Do you have people in your audience who are scared to speak up? With Slido questions, they too have a voice. And you can even see which questions are the most important using upvotes. Being a presenter is tough enough. Slido integrates with Google Slides so everything is together in one place. Oh, and all the data you've collected, it's safely stored. So you can export it, analyze it, and use it to make your presentations even better. So that's it. Slido's intuitive, easy, and your audience does not have to download anything. Try it yourself and make your presentations more conversational and interactive with Slido. There we go. Okay, so um, that is Slido. So now we're going to um, actually do engage in our own kind of little poll. So, With your phones, um, if you want to either type in www.slido.com or if you take um, take out like your camera or well your camera on your phone and hover over this barcode, you can scan it and it'll kind of, um, you don't have to take the picture, it'll come down if you have an iPhone. I'm not sure how it works on Android, but um, you just click on the link that pops up. And then um, if you're going through Slido um, and you're going through the web, browser and typing in slido.com, um, just type in ADP center for the event code. And when you're finished, just let me know. So then we can move forward. I'm having trouble where to find that to type in. My screen says demo 127, but where do oh, you okay. put in the event? Okay, you're there, perfect. Oh, okay. Um, Cause you scanned it, right? Yeah. Okay, then you're there. Okay. And we'll start in just a second. Um, does everyone is everyone else able to get there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay. All right. So um, if everyone's there, let's start. So we're gonna start off with our first question. What is your favorite color? And we just click it. Yep, you just click. Oh no, sorry. Voting is closed for Voting some reason. Closed. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's fix that. So now you guys can see what it looks like through um, through the user end. So now, can you reopen open that question for that that poll? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do right now since voting is closed. So this is what it looks like when you go on through um, the user from like the web. This is where I created the poll, essentially. Um, so you would log in and create an account. And this is how it would pop up. So I had created um, this demo for today. And I know someone just joined us. Um, let me just open up so they also, or I'll come back to that actually in just a second. Um, so this is where I had created the poll. So I clicked on the demo and for some reason it's closed. So I'm gonna activate the poll right here. And now it should give all of us, if you want to just refresh your page. Huh, it's still oh, unlock voting. Maybe that's why. There we go. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so for whoever just joined, um, if you want to grab your phone and go to slido.com 
and then you're going to enter ADP center as the event code, or you can scan um, this little um, QR code on your phone. It'll bring you right to it. So if you want to just let me know once you have that done, um, and then we can kind of move on with the results. All right, so I'm hoping that everyone's here. If not, just um, speak up and then we can always go back. It's no problem. So um, let's present. And so once everyone started voting, the results will pop up here. So purple, green, blue, yellow. And then it's really cool because it's all in live um, live results. So like you can see how many participants, there's five votes here. Um, and it'll, yeah, it's just, I think it's a really handy little um, thing. And you can obviously like make more complex questions rather than just what is your favorite color. So um, this is a multiple choice question. So if everyone's done voting, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is kind of like a rating question. So on a scale from one through five, what are your stress levels today? One being not stressed at all and five being very stressed. So I take it one is the far left star? Yes. Should have a number one on that. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Okay. So four votes so far. Um, so that's really great. Everyone feels not that stressed today. <laughs> I know yesterday I was at like a three or four, <laughs> but um, and you? then what's that? Uh, I went to go donate things and, and uh, someone that lost their house to a fire by a flip property oh. that I did. And I just got down the block and I had a flat tire and oh. couldn't do it with a compressor. So my stress level is like, I'm okay. Cause AAA got my car now. So yeah. I just have to clean up my house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you were late for the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Aye, aye. So this is my well, daughter's here room, now. everybody. <laughs> While she's not here, I'm working on her room. <laughs> as long as all you're right. here now. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a blowout. I didn't kill anybody. So it's a good thing. Perfect. Yeah. Right. As long as we didn't kill anyone today. <laughs> um, so what's also really interesting too, I think, is like you can actually see the average score. So since it's so low, um, the average score is 1.5, which is really great. Um, I've done this presentation or like incorporated this question into my presentations before. And like, it's typically at like a three or four. So I guess we got a pretty stress-free group today, which is great. Okay, and what is your favorite hobby? So this is a write-in question um, and feel free to write in your favorite hobby on um, through Slido. So as we type them in, they're going to pop up on the screen. Okay, someone likes to play tennis. Um, wildlife watching, really cool. I like to hang out with my cat. That's actually my response. <laughs> and give it another second. If anyone else is typing, I'm not sure. I can't see you guys. Grandkids. Nice. Okay. Okay. So lastly, um, so those were just like some of the poll questions. Lastly, um, I'm going to have you guys type in. So like it should have automatically popped up, but if not, there is a Q and A portion. Just type in any questions or any comments that you have, um, and it'll pop up on the screen. Oops. I don't know why it just forwarded. <laughs> okay so um if you take a look on your on the 
Slido app, um, you can actually upvote certain questions. So, okay, great. We have a lot of questions coming in. Um, so I'm gonna upvote the cat because I think it's funny. Um, so it'll all the like the most um, the questions with the most upvotes will actually come to the top. So the most popular questions can be shown. So like this is it's easy with just four or five of us here. But say you have like. I don't know, more people, 20 people in here. And you want to see, you don't have much time, but a lot of people have questions. If people upvote the questions that they think are most interesting, it'll bring it to the top. And um, you can see like what people want, what questions they want to be answered. So let's say, what's your cat's name? Is my cat, I actually have three. One of them is Kit. Um, she's a girl. The other one is Midge. She's also a girl. And then lastly, we have a boy cat. His name is Sebastian. Um, so, and then once I'm done answering the question, um, and I'm just controlling this right from the presentation itself, which is what they meant by integrating it into Google Slides, because with um, some of these interactive presentations, you have to have like, like I know Pear Deck is one, and I, I actually really don't like Pear Deck because it's so complicated and it's, I think it's kind of just messy. Um, you have to have it on like presenting on one platform, so like through your laptop, and then you as a teacher, or educator, or presenter would be controlling it through like a tablet. And I think that it's just kind of difficult, like seeing like what everyone sees, like through the um, through your laptop or the presentation, looking at your audience, and then also managing it. So this is all great. So I can manage it since um, we answered this question. I'm just going to click this check mark right here, and it's going to go away and kind of be checked off because I already answered it. Um, someone said boating, gardening. Check that. I guess some of those are someone's hobbies. Um, do you need a subs subscription like Kahoot to host this? Nope, you don't, not at all. You don't need a subscription to Kahoot either. Um, however, this also like there are limitations with the free version as well. Um, just like with Kahoot, um, you have the basic essential functions of it. But if you want to kind of have more people or create like, I think you're only allowed to create three poll questions with the basic version of Slido. Um, but like if you want to create like five or 10, if you're really actively going to be using it, you would um, have to pay to upgrade. And then um, I'll check that. But then also this little button over here can actually say you want to pick a question from down here. You can click this button and it'll bring it to the top. Um, the cost. I'm going to get into the cost in just a second um, and I'll kind of show you how much um, everything is, but basically what I'm using right now is the free version. And if you're kind of just incorporating a couple of questions, I think the free version, the basic version is uh, sufficient, but if you plan on like using it extensively, then you might want to upgrade. What is your second best hobby? Um, hmm. Well, right now, because of the pandemic, I like to eat and cook a lot, <laughs> um, but typically I like to do artsy things. I like to paint, um, take pictures and stuff like that. So um, does anyone have any questions so far with Slido? And you can shout them out. You don't have to type them in. So Slido is helpful when you do a live presentation, whereas Kahoot is not live. You can just put it up and have your students do it whenever they want. Is that? With Kahoot? With Kahoot, I'm pretty sure you can do both. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you can either have it done live, like what we did, or you can have them do it at a self-paced kind of um, timing. But with Slido, it would, um, I think with Slido too, you can arrange, like you can schedule it. However, you would have to have people log on, take the Slido, and then you will have the results they get recorded, which I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, but yeah. They can, I think, yeah, so basically they both can either be live or they can be scheduled, um, but you would actually like have to schedule that. Like this one was scheduled for from today until like tomorrow and you can actually have it up to like a week, which is um, pretty handy. Um, so just to like cover what we went over, there's live polls. You can have different types of um, questions. You can also do like a correct or an incorrect answer. Um, so if like, you know, 
right now these there was no incorrect answer, but like say there is a right choice, um, you can do that. You can also hide the answer from the audience to build suspension, just like with Kahoot, um, and then reveal it. Um, there's an audience Q&A, which is what we did. You can also, these questions that you guys ask, you can ask at any time. Um, and then, you know, once the presenter views them, then they'll kind of do it. You can add a Q&A slide or um, the presenter can just see from their phones and answer it at the end of the presentation or whatnot. Um, again, there are upvotes, which I, that's probably my favorite, one of my favorite features with this because um, just to see like what the audience is thinking um, because it's not always, it's hard to tell, you know, like just when you're presenting, you're focused on, presenting the content, you don't know what everyone is thinking. You might have a sense, but um, actually incorporating and integrating the audience with you, it makes it much more interactive. And I think it reaches them in a deeper, deeper way. Um, and then lastly, there are analytic analytics. So all of everything that we just did together, all of the answers were actually being recorded um, from like into the actual poll where I had created it. And you can export those results onto your computer or to your Google Drive, which is, it's Google compatible. So um, I'm gonna show you guys what the analytics section looks like. Um, so this is from the poll that I had just created. Um, right now, if you, as you can tell, it's not active because if I wanted to act, like open up the questions again, I would just click this play button right here. So the results will pop up right here. And then I'm gonna press deactivate because the polling is finished. Um, and with the analytics, you just click on the analytics portion right here. Um, and all of the questions, all of everything that we mentioned was recorded. And if you wanna export it, um, you can click this export button, but also if you want these cute, they create these really nice um, nifty little infographics. So I'm just gonna click that. Um, it lets you have a theme. So I want red. You can also um, share it with a link, but I just want to open it in a new tab and it's going to pop up right here. So it'll give you kind of um, the report. So attendees asked five questions with a total of one like. Um, you know, this is much more interesting when you actually have like a topic kind of like they're just silly questions, but um, you know, you, if you have like you're doing a presentation on something legitimately um, or just to see like what your students are thinking, they could come up all right here. Um, so, and then it'll tell you like how many people participated in the poll, um, what, you know, what were the main topics? So um, I think that it's really, I, I just love Slido. I think it's a really cool platform. Um, and then I just have a couple of quick tips. Um, so um, what, what's really cool about Slido is that you don't have to switch through, like I mentioned before, you can literally just integrate it into your Google Slides. However, there is a quick disclaimer, you can't use an MSU email um, or account because it, it doesn't give the option. So like I had to create this, I created the presentation on my MSU account, but then I shared it to um, my personal email because I couldn't incorporate Slido through it. MSU, it's just like an affiliate, um, like it's a closed um, community. So you can't, it doesn't give you access to it. So you have, if you do want to incorporate Slido, you would have to use your personal email. Um, but this is what it looks like when you create a session. Um, and again, there's no download necessary, just join from any device. Um, but a quick tip is to group your polls together to, to um, present according to a schedule. So um, you can create sessions and group like create session one and then have like, say I wanna present this again, I'm presenting this poll again um, or the same presentation in like a couple weeks. So I can create a second session where the results get reset and the poll is active like on, I don't know, let's say in March, March 3rd at 4 p.m. Cause that's when I'm giving the presentation again, let's say. So then you can create session two, which is pretty, it's just like a simple, like you don't have to create another poll for it. Um, so yeah. I have a question about that actually. Um, yeah. 
do you, you say you don't need to have a presentation in order to make a poll or have a poll available? Um, so let me think about that for a second. Um, you don't, you don't. Okay. But if you want um, your audience to view the results in live time, um, they can just join from their phones. Mm -hmm. But if you want to like incorporate it into your presentation, you can, but you don't necessarily have to have a presentation to use Slido. Okay. Um, but you wouldn't have the same effect, like you wouldn't be able to see, or maybe I think you actually would be able to view it through your phone, but it, it might not necessarily be like all together. Right. Yeah. Because we did it together and you know, we saw the results, we talked about it. Um, and you can control it from your browser, but it wouldn't like you wouldn't really be able to talk about it. But you would be able to have people um answer the questions and take the polls at their own all together. But you would essentially you would kind of need to like go on to the next question. Um, it would, you would have to be controlling it, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'd still have to be somewhat live and controlling the poll, okay. Exactly. Yep. yep. Okay, and then these are the pricing. So I know someone asked earlier, um, the basic is it's free. Um, currently I used the basic version, you can have up to 100 participants, which is a lot of people. Um, there's unlimited audience Q&A. They can ask as many questions they want. The only thing is, is that you can only do three polls per event. So what I did in, in this presentation, I used three polls um, and that's, I couldn't add a fourth question. Um, if I want, but, but there are ways around it. Like you don't really need to upgrade because you can just have your audience log on to a different, um, quiz or a different session. Um, so like what we did in the beginning with the scanning the barcode, if you wanna have more questions, you would just have them scan a different barcode or log in with a different name and then just add more questions if you want the, like if you ne definitely needed more questions but didn't wanna upgrade to paying $15 a month or 60 or, or more. Um, but yeah, so um, I really like it. I think it's a great resource and it just, you get questions out of people um, that they might not necessarily feel comfortable in asking because I'm actually like, I am presenting this, but I'm pretty shy um, when it comes to like the classroom or like if there's other people, you know, this is my show. But like, if I was an, a part of the audience, I would feel very shy to speak up, especially in um, a Zoom setting. So just being able to type it in and you can either put your name in or stay anonymous too, which is great. Um, it just gives people a voice. Okay, so that was Slido. Um, if there are no questions, I'm gonna move on to Prezi. And Prezi is a little bit less user-friendly, I would say. It's not that difficult, but it doesn't, uh, it is a little bit more, um, asks for a little bit more creativity, I would say. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is basically an online flash-based presentation creator. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it is in just a second, but basically it can, um, presentation, but then you can click on things to kind of bring you to a different section of the presentation. So it's a lot more visual. Um, and in that, in that regard, it can target the new generation. So I guess my generation of learners, um, because the audience can actively and visually engage. Um, and it kind of takes you through slide animations. So it's like, can set like you can move on from different concepts um, and you can actually visually see that rather than just saying, okay, we're moving on. It's kind of, it will show you how you're moving on. Um, and also what's great is that it allows for collaboration for up to 10 individuals. So you, if you are working on a project with a couple of, you're you know, collaborating with a couple of other teachers or other um, presenters, you can create it and work on it at the same time together. Um, so this is just, very, very basic. I'm not gonna go into much detail because it can be kind of complicated, um, but basically this is how you create it. Um, you can either start from scratch right here. You would go on to prezi.com, create an account, and it would uh, you would create a new presentation, um, start from scratch, or you can click on a template. 
Um, I highly suggest clicking on a template because it's very, it can get very complicated. And you might like, if you are very interested in like graphic design and, um, you know, being super visually creative, then it might be something really fun for you. But if you're just trying to input information in, I would highly suggest a template. Next, you would edit your Prezi. It's very similar to PowerPoint um, and Google Slides. And it's kind of like an outline, so you can view it all right here. Um, it'll like, so basically, this if this was to pop up, right, it's this Prezi was on, let's say, Atomic Theory. Um, you would click on, let's say, Foxtrot. I would click on that, oops, and then it'll take me to that page. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean in a second, but it'll create an outline. So this is the main page, and then these are the sub pages of Atomic Theory. Um, and then similar to Google Slides, you can export it um, by either presenting it live, or you can share it with a link and they can either view the Prezi or they can you can allow for them to collaborate as well. So let's check it out. Um, so this was something that the former GA had created. Um, so let's play the Prezi. So his was created and it kind of is in the, the template that he used. It um, looks like a newspaper. Um, and I'm just waiting for it to load. A question. Would yeah. you say that Prezi is the one thing that you really need to plan out? before kind of creating the slides and using the templates rather than all the other things you've shown so far? Not necessarily because it'll take you through it, mm. um, but it definitely requires more planning for sure. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to plan it prior to, but it would probably be helpful to map it out a little bit. Um, because you, it's kind of like an outline, like I mentioned. So there's like topics and then there's subtopics, but it will take you through it. Okay. So you'll see um, what I mean right now when I say like topics and then subtopics. So um, this is like what, this is all the content that this Prezi has. Um, so it'll show it here. And then when we click on the next button, it'll take us. So there is a video right here. I'm not going to click it because it's just going to take forever to load. Um, but so this is like the title of it. Then it'll take us to the video. Then it'll take us. So what exactly is a catch 22? So just like a Google Slides or a PowerPoint, you kind of know like when you want to present, you know, first you want to give a basic introduction, then you want to go into deeper contents. So you can map it out if that's helpful for you but, or you can just create it as you go. It's totally up to you, um, but it does require a little bit more planning. So then it'll take us to a catch 22 in general. And you just keep clicking through and it'll bring you to the different parts of the newspaper. So this is why it's kind of like a little bit more visually appealing because it's like, okay, now we need some proof. Here are the quotes. Okay, next we're gonna move on. And then it brings you here, go over that. Okay, next topic, we're gonna move on. Oh, sorry, we have to go to the picture first. Then we're gonna move on to the other bubble. So it's like a little bit more, when they say like the new generation, it's a little bit more, um, it's kind of extra, but people who are, um, visual learners, this is really helpful for them. And you can make it as detailed as you want. You can incorporate different videos, bring in different um, resources and yeah. And then also what's great. So at the end, it'll take you to, um, oops, it'll, oops, sorry. <laughs> it'll take you to the, back to the beginning. But let's say like, you know, we went over this presentation and I wanted to go back to a certain section. All I have to do is click on the section and it'll take me right to it. 
and then we can go back to the beginning by scrolling. And then if you see like there's little bubbles or little dots right there, it'll take you through all the different sections. You can record this, right? And share it with your students. You could um, record yourself doing the presentation. I'm not, well, you can record it like, Hmm, let's see. You definitely, there are ways to record it. Like if you were to do a Zoom and then screen record it, like what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that is, you can't record it yourself speaking live through Prezi itself. But Got let's it. say, you know, just like what I was just doing now and what I'm doing right now, I'm screen recording. Um, and I'm also recording this, um, this part of the presentation um, because we do upload all of our, um, I'll upload like the actual slides to our YouTube channel. But yeah, so you can record it through external resources, but not through Prezi itself. But also if you wanted to share the actual presentation with someone and it'll take them through exactly how it just took me through, you can use that link and share it with them. And um, then like, you might not be like verbally explaining it, but they'll be able to see all the content just like you would share a Google Slides or a PowerPoint. Okay, um, so this is what I had shared in the chat with you guys, um, just as a review, has everything here. Um, and if you have any questions, um, you can always reach us at um, crc01 at montclair.edu. We also have Instagram, Twitter, and a Facebook. Um, it's at ADP Center, and then also our website, adpcenter.org. Um, but I wanted to open up um the floor for any questions that you guys may have um does anyone have any questions at all regarding any of the presentation um programs that we covered today um, no but i think you did a great job thank you i appreciate that thank thank you i've heard these names all over the place but i never had someone explain them all in one place. Good, I hope it's helpful. And if you guys have any questions, just feel free to um, send an email. But yeah, I know sometimes like you might hit a roadblock with a certain, like some of the programs. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do just feel free to reach out, um, but they're all pretty user-friendly and um, yeah, it they're not too difficult. Prezi, I will say like, I like Prezi. I, li I love watching them when people are presenting them as like a student. I remember in my undergrad, people have used presentations and uh, through Prezi. And I really liked watching it, but I it's a little bit more complicated to create. But all the other programs that I mentioned are super simple to follow through and easy to easy to create. Sorry, I think um, someone's talking. I, I don't know if someone's talking and it's muted, but. No, I was just saying thank you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I think Jack, you're muted. Yeah. That's no, what I just I want didn't to say, uh, you did a nice job showing mm -hmm. the various programs and, and giving us a, a fast overview. I'm sure it would take a long time to learn to use any one of them for somebody my age, because I'm, <laughs> I'm an overhead projector and transparency guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, um, it, it might take you a while, but if you have any questions, I'm here. Um, my name is River. And yeah, there, there are pretty user friendly, but I know like it can be a little bit challenging if you're not too familiar with like, um, I know the older generations have a much more difficult time and the younger generations pick it up so quickly. I have younger brothers and they, I, yeah, they know so much more than me. Um, but yeah, it can be, if you have any trouble, just feel free to send an email. Um, that's what we're here for. Thanks, Rosie. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, Carol, did you have any? I couldn't hear you. No. Do you want to type it in the chat? Um, and also don't forget that the JPEG is there if you haven't downloaded it already, it's there if you ever want to reference it.
as Carol's typing. I'm also just curious, what um, was your favorite, was everyone's favorite program? Did you guys like anything in particular? Um, I would probably be using Slido because I'm going to be starting uh, graduate soon with um, like social science and data analysis. So I was like, oh, great. That's perfect for polling and things. But yeah, it's good for presentation too. Yeah, definitely. Um, can I listen to the entire? Yeah, definitely. So I'm actually going to take uh, the presentation um, that I, you know, this whole presentation, I'm going to upload it onto YouTube. So you guys will have access to it. Um, if you just type in Google YouTube ADP Center, it should be there. Um, also, if you go through our website, it'll have the little YouTube um, icon. You can click on it and it'll take, take you guys there to the YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, I really like Slido too. That's my favorite. It's so, I don't know. I just really, I like being able to know what everyone's thinking and kind of make it a conversation because it can be, it's hard to tell what people are thinking and it can kind of be awkward too. And I feel like it, it breaks the ice. You can do like the icebreakers and make it more personal rather than just someone talking the whole time. I, I've used poll everywhere, but the, I like, yeah, Slido just gives you more. You can do the questions and, and have the yeah. analytics too all at one time. Yeah. I actually, I've heard of Poll Everywhere. I'm writing it down right now because um, I'm curious because I've heard about it, but I've never used it myself. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I, I yeah. have to check that out. Yeah. But yeah, I do also like the analytics part, part too. And they, the way that they make the infographics is great, I think, because it's so simple and just easy to follow. Okay, guys. Oh, were you going to see? If there's no other questions, um, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for coming. And again, you can feel free to reach us anytime. So have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye.